Welcome to Sealing God's People with your host, Dennis Beard. Well, looking at Scripture, the Lord told us, in a visitation, seal my people by my word. As I am sending the angel from the east heaven to seal the living God, so send I you. We took this very seriously, knowing that it is a profound word that we're in the last of the last days. Now, most are focusing on the next thing on the prophetic calendar is Ezekiel 36 to 39. Iran and proxy there against Israel, along with Lebanon, the Hezbollah, Hamas, the different uh, uh, Turkey, along with Russia supplying arms. And we know it's the last of the last days. We expect and know that sooner or later, Israel will be attacked. And to what extent will this war be? Now, will it be a pre-tribulation rapture? Will it be post-tribulation that we're going through this time and it's going to end in the day of the Lord in the battle of Armageddon? And uh, we'll take a look at the scriptures to see the truth. We take a look in Ezekiel 36. He says, I'm going to bring Israel back into its own land. And since 586 B.C., uh, there with Nebuchadnezzar uh, besieging Jerusalem, destroying the temple, Solomon's temple that the Jews, Israel, as they had no land to call its own over 2,600 years ago. And every Bible scholar knows this. Nothing new. But what is new? The ceiling. And we've been told that there's a pre-tribulation rapture that there's seven years of tribulation that the body of Christ will be pre-tribbed out of this in a rapture and will be in heaven for seven years at a marriage supper of the Lamb and then come back in Revelation 19. But the scriptures are altogether different from that. There's not three wars there. We know that there is a battle of Gog and Magog before the millennial. We know there's a battle of Gog and Magog after the millennial, which is the satanic nations that come against the camp of Israel. And God does not allow the nations to get into the war. He simply rains down fire from heaven and destroys them. And we go into the white throne judgment. Well, here, where we are right now, presently, in these last days, Israel has been made a nation. And uh, there, May the 14th, 1948, they have fought wars that they thought would be impossible for Israel to win, and they won it. 1956 war and the 1967 Six-Day War, and a total victory for Israel. But we see that this last battle will not be fought by Israeli uh, force, intelligence, they will be overwhelmed that it will be impossible for them to stand alone. And God calls the city Jerusalem his city. And the people of Israel, according to the covenant made with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, the fathers, that they will be a nation forever. And uh, he is true to his word. He has not literally cast off his people that he did foreknow. There is a national Israel, the nation Israel, and there is a spiritual Israel. Just as we see in the word of God, there's no replacement theology. The covenant that God made with Abraham in Genesis 12 of being a nation and all nations of the earth being blessed in Israel is still binding today for God has spoken it and it has not been broken. He has not cast away his people. There in Genesis 15, he said there would be a seed of Abraham, meaning the church. But there's no replacement theology. Israel, as a nation, is still God's chosen people. Jerusalem is his city. It's a city that he watches. It's the apple of his eye. Then we also see the church. The ecclesia, the church and assembly, the firstborn whose name is written in heaven. This work in the last days. 
this work of the ministry that we're called for, which will be only those that are sealed in the fullest measure of the, of the statue of Jesus Christ unto a perfect man, will be the ones chosen for the work of the ministry. They will be the ones that will be walking in the light as he is in the light, having fellowship one with another, blood flow, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And we take a look. Now, Israel's made a nation. He's allowed to flourish. Uh, that desert land is now uh, prosperous. And all that uh, uh, the trees that have been destroyed by Romans, uh, they're out of Israel. And uh, literally, uh, the Turks came in, uh, the Ottoman Empire, and said if you had a tea tree in Israel, it would be taxed. But now the trees have been planted, uh, even though Hamas shooting uh, uh, the various uh, rockets over into Israel to burn the land and whatever. Uh, it's still prevailing. Now, there's a war coming. And the thing is, is what war is this? Is this the, a preemptive war to Armageddon? Or is this going to end in, starting in a proxy war, and then end in Armageddon, the Battle of Armageddon, being one of the same battle? And as we take a look at the Scripture, and we see in Ezekiel 38, and he breaks it down for us. And the word of the Lord came unto me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, <clears throat> set thy face against God. Now, of course, is the title of the leader, the king. And the land of Magog, <clears throat> the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Now, we know that that's a Sith Sithian, the Scythian people there, of Russia, the Rosh, there. And thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the old Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws. In other words, God is going to fight with Israel in this battle. The thing is, is this preemptive? Is this a forerunner to the Battle of Armageddon? Or that will this literally end in the Battle of Armageddon? and the millennial kingdom set up where Jesus will be king over the earth and his name won. And all nations of the earth literally coming to worship the Lord Jesus Christ because the Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. He said he's going to bring all of Gog and Magog, Meshach and Tubal, forth with all the armies, horses, horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And he starts talking about who are they, the nations that are coming against Israel. Persia, which is the country of Iran. Uh, everyone knows that. Ethiopia, of course, Libya with them. And, of course, Iran is Persia. We have the Teak, the Turks there, uh, and we have Ham founded Libya, which is called Fut and the Word of God, uh, Libya being Africa. All of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all of his bands, Russia, the house of Togarma of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee, the nations coming against Israel. Now, these, is telling us, is from the north, a great evil befalling all the people of the land. We find that in Jeremiah, the prophet to the nation. The first vision that Jeremiah sees, he said, what see thou, Jeremiah? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. The almond tree was first called Luz, or Bethel, house of God. Those are a reed like unto a rod. That rod is that rod of the church. And we find that in Revelation 11. It was a reed like unto a rod given unto me, saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, the altar, and them that worship therein. Well, there's that rod. The first vision Jeremiah sees, I see a rod of an almond tree. That means the church will flourish 
and Israel, all Israel, national, the nation Israel, national Israel, and the church will be saved, according to Paul in Romans 11. And there at that time, there comes the witnesses of God during this time. During a time, times a half, three and a half years, 42 months, he gives power to his two witnesses. And we've discussed the two witnesses before, that it is the olive trees, the candlestick, which is the church. The church, the body of Christ, being one witness, and the Spirit of God being the other witness, just as Jesus pointed out to us in the days of his flesh in John 8, 13 through 27. And definitely has a prophetic meaning to it, showing us revelation of Jesus himself. For everything that is done in Jesus in the days of his flesh, the forerunner, showing us the way, the truth, and the life, will also be the body of Christ in the last days, fulfilling the last three and a half years, 42 months, time, times, and dividing of a time of the Jesus ministry, the work of the ministry. Now, all these nations coming against Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone against uh, all the nations of the earth. And they will fight against Jerusalem. We're finding it here in Ezekiel 38. And he says uh, that God at that time says, uh, go up, uh, this is the Antichrist saying, all of these nations coming against anti-Semitic, hating the Jews, hating Israel, and they're going to come like a storm, like a cloud to cover the land. All thy bands and many people with it with them. The Lord says, it shall also come to pass that at that same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go up to them that are dressed, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take a spoil and to take a prey and to turn thine hand upon the desert places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nation, Israel, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Are thou come to take a spoil? Are ye going to literally destroy and take Israel as a prey? Or are thou gathered? Has thou gathered thy company? to take of prey, to carry away silver and gold and take away cattle and good, to take of you a great spoil. God says, therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, thus saith the Lord God, in that day. Now we're talking about that day, the day there being the day of the Lord. So this battle is not preemptive to Armageddon. This leads into the battle of Armageddon to the great supper of the feast uh, there that God has prepared for all the fowl of the air. Come and eat the flesh of kings and all of those that have come against Israel, his nation, his people. And he says he will come from the northern parts, north of Israel. The second vision that Jeremiah sees what do you see there, Jeremiah? That I see a seething pot, a boiling pot. The face thereof is toward the north. God said, Out of the north a great evil shall be befall all the inhabitants of the land. This will literally be a time that all the nation will have a son of man, a, a, a man of son of perdition, a man of sin that will literally rule all nations. And this, this man will forecast his devices and prosper. He will be a man that comes in by peace and shall destroy many. Arms shall stand on his part. He will come against the glorious land. It's what we see here in Ezekiel. He's there to literally destroy the people of God. 
And God said, in that day, that day of the Lord, he said uh, that you will come from your place out of the north parts, that northern, out of the north, a great evil shall befall all the inhabitants of the land. There are many people with you, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel. Notice God said Israel is my people as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days that I will bring thee against my land. This is the sovereignty of God, that he will be sanctified in the eyes of all nations, for all will know. The bottom line is the revelation of Jesus Christ, that he alone is God. And there's not a trinity, not a two-ness, not a oneness, where the man's not God, but at the right hand of God. But he is Jesus only, the old Holy One of Israel. And there's not another. We will not go to ecumenical councils and uh, uh, theology and uh, different theologians with commentary saying, what is the Godhead? And we can't understand this or that. All will know him from the least to the greatest. For the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. He's using Israel, his people, to be sanctified and before all nations to know one thing, that God said, I am the Lord thy God, and there's not another. All shall know me. The whole judgment of God is that he will be sanctified and will be known of all nations, and that we, the Christian people of God that do know him, will be strong and, and do exploits at this time. It'll be a time of trouble, such as never was, such as was a nation. No, nor ever shall be again. This is Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And when you see all these things beginning to come to pass, then look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. We're at the door, but there is a great tribulation coming in winter and on the Sabbath day. Not the keeping of a natural Sabbath, but the Sabbath of rest remaineth to the people of God, Hebrews 4. And there will be two wings of a great eagle given to the woman, where she, the church, flieth into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God. We didn't prepare it. It's prepared of God, where we're nourished from the face of the serpent for a time, times the binding of a time, three and a half years, 42 months. Now, God brings a, a, a climax, the alpha and a, the finish, to all of it in his great power in judgments upon the great whore and the beast. We find here, she's, he said, I'm bringing you against my land. That's what Jeremiah saw in his second vision, at seething pot, a boiling pot. You're going to gather or scatter for or against God. You either will love Jerusalem and pray for her, so shall they prosper that love thee, or you'll be against Israel. You'll be against the people of God. And Jesus warned in John 16, I have forewarned you that you should not, that you should not be offended. For the time will come that are going to deliver you by their synagogues out of their churches. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killed you will think that he did God, the Lord Jesus Christ, a service. Why? Because they do not know the Father nor me, Jesus said. If you'd have known me, you'd have known the Father. It's not a trinity. It's not a binary or a oneness doctrine. He, the man, is God. He is that quickening spirit, 1 Corinthians fifteen forty-five. Now, those that have an ear to hear knows that the time is at hand. The Iranian proxy right now and the nuclear arms race, that when they have a nuclear weapon, they will use it. And there we already know that the Hezbollah in Lebanon have over 150,000, not just or as missiles, but they have the missiles there, they got a technology of 150,000 missiles all against Israel. That will be and Israel doing all it can with the armed dome and everything else, but are going to need God. 
the Lord God Almighty. That Messiah that they did not receive when he first come because they had uh, they had a, a, a zeal for God, but not according to wisdom. They went about establishing their own righteousness, which is of the law, not the righteousness of God by faith. For at that, Israel stumbled. Blindness in part happened to them. But they are still beloved for the Father's sake. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, the covenant given to them. And God will be sanctified in them. Because it is his land. His Israel is his people. Jerusalem is his city. And that's the center focal that God will do this last day work. And there's not a seven-year marriage supper of the Lamb during the time of great tribulation. We are here. Because the Lord will not come back in Revelation 19 with the armies of heaven until after the great tribulation. We see in Revelation 12, we're still here. That woman, the church, is given two wings of her great eagle. Where we don't fly into heaven, we fly into the wilderness. That is not heaven. And in Revelation 4, where they tell you the rapture is, no, there was a trumpet. There was a door open in heaven and a trumpet talking with John, saying, come up hither, and I will show you things. It's not there that you're raptured. I'm showing you things. I'm showing you the things of faith. Faith is the substance of things, so far. The evidence of things not seen. What is John seeing? He's seeing the faith that was once delivered to the saints. He's seeing all truth. Faith is the substance of things, so far. And in, in 1 John 2.20, you have an unction from the Holy One, not a Holy Trinity, not a Holy Two, or a holy oneness, but a holy one. And you have no need that any man teach you. The Holy Ghost is your teacher. He does use apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, yes, for the perfecting of the saints. But it's all in Jesus Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And it's by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Lord is doing that now. And he did foreknow, then he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And that those that he predestined, them he called them, they called it justified. Then he justified, he also glorified to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Now, during this time, he's speaking of a war here against the nation Israel. And then we know there's going to be a three and one half year of the work of the ministry that God will confirm his covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He was cut off. The Messiah was cut off, but not for himself. Who shall declare his generation? The seed will. That will be counted for the generation, which is the Christ seed. It will be a Jesus ministry. But it will culminate all of it in a war that we see against Gog and Magog there before the millennial, and then the Israel will try to fight, and God will intervene. If he doesn't, there would be the end of, of his nation Israel. He will not allow it. So at this time, God says, I bring that northern army against you, all the armies with them a great multitude, a great army. And he says to Jeremiah, prophet to the nations, that, what do you see, Jeremiah? I say, I see a seething pot, a boiling pot. The face there is toward the north. Why? Because a great evil shall come upon all the people out of the north against all people. All the nations will be drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication. She, they will believe her lies. She said, I said a queen. I am no widow. I will see no sorrow. There's no birth pain. We don't have a cross here. We know God, and we're his bride, a queen. We, she says, I said a queen. I shall see no sorrow. Well, God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is gathering this north. He is doing it. It's nothing in the world, O Syrian, the rod of mine anger, 
the staff in their hand is my indignation. Babylon, the kingdoms of the north. Why? To show forth his power, his majesty, his glory. And he said, O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, God's anger. He's using the nations. It's a sifting going on among the nations. Amos 9, 9. He uses the nations to sift the people of God. Why? Because the ones that are hired harlings will run. They will not literally shed their blood, their own blood for the testimony of Jesus, sealing, sealing their testimony with their own blood. They won't do it. They will not die or be a mortar or a witness for this gospel because they're hired harlings. But those that do know their God, there'll be many slain. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake, Jesus said. Some of you will be put to death because they have not known the Father nor me. They don't know the revelation of Jesus. So the last book of the Word of God is the revelation of Jesus Christ to literally reveal who he is once and for all and set up his kingdom in the earth. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jesus is his name. Not a second person of the Godhead. Not a man standing on the right hand of God and God sitting on the throne and this man's beside it. No. Jesus Christ, King, Lord of lords and King of kings, reigning and ruling upon his throne out of Jerusalem. And all the nations of the earth blessed in Israel. So this battle we're seeing here is not just a preemptive strike against Israel that will lead us into Armageddon. It is the beginning of it, of the battle of Armageddon. He says here, he said, I, in the latter days, God said in the latter days, I will bring you against my land. He puts it in their heart, just like he did with Pharaoh. He hardens Pharaoh's heart, would not let God's people go. And he destroyed all the gods of Egypt. Here, he's going to destroy all the gods of this earth. Every god of this earth in this world will be destroyed once and for all. This will be a battle like no other battle has ever been. And we read on and see that it will take seven years to burn all the weapons of warfare at this war. That God comes down and destroys the enemies of Israel. And not only that, to cleanse the land through the shedding of blood, to put out the evil from a month. There will be seven months of burying the dead in Amona, a multitude of slain. That seven months of burial will be dead bodies all over that they will have men of continual employment just to bury the dead bodies. Somebody said, well, that's not, that, uh, that's not Armageddon. That's the proxy war against Israel, and they went, and we haven't No, It comes into, as we read, he says, you're going to gather yourself to this great supper of God, all the fowls of, of heaven. He goes and says, there will be a great shaking in Israel. We find it in Haggai too. When God shakes all the nations, then the desire of all nations will come. All the silver and the gold is mine. And I'll make the glory of the latter house greater than that of the former. Hey, God, too. It's in the, not Pentecost, the Shabbat. It's in Sukkot. Hey, God, too. The 21st day of the seventh month, which is Tishri, which is Ethneim of the seventh month, the season of tabernacles. Not Pentecost, but tabernacles. Not Pentecostals, but tabernacleists. To those that have an ear to hear. Now, God's getting his people seal now for this work to those that have an ear to hear. And God said, he's going to take all those nations and literally it's going to be where he disconfined them. 
Every man's sword will be against his own brother. All throughout. And he said, after that, he brings down, look at Ezekiel 38, verse 22, and I will plead against him, all this army, with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone, just that we read in Revelation 16. God said, thus will I magnify myself. Nothing but the name of Jesus being lifted up. All his power being seen. And he said, I will sanctify myself, magnify myself, sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. And they shall know that I, Jesus Christ, the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord. Lord Jehovah God Almighty, the Tetragrammaton, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God Almighty. This war will proclaim it. Somebody says, well, that's not Armageddon. Yes, it is. And he goes on and says, he prophesies against God, and look what he prophesies. Now, we're going to Revelation 16 in just a minute. He tells them over here in Ezekiel 39, what's happening in this war? He says that, you will not pollute my name anymore. And uh, that he'll set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields of bucklers, all the armies, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. You're going to find that in Ezekiel 39, verse 9. You're going to see seven months in burial, Ezekiel 39, verse, verse 12, and 13 for the land to be cleansed. And then he says, you're going, look at verse 17. That's what I want to point out. We see the similarities that can't be missed. When he turns down hail, fire, and brimstone, great hail burning from heaven. And he says in Ezekiel 39, verse 17, And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speaking to every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to what? To my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that you may eat flesh and drink blood. What is this? We find it in Revelation 16 in Armageddon. We'll read it in just a minute. So we're at the last of the last days at, and at the end of many years, in the latter days, in these days. That's the reason why it is so important and essential to receive the seal of the living God of the apocalyptic sealing in Revelation 7. It's happening now. We must know who he is and the work of the ministry in these things of the work in the work of the ministry and not only to read but to keep the sayings of the book of this prophecy the revelation of Jesus Christ the last book in the word of God which John ate and it was sweet to his mouth and bitter to his belly because we the body of Christ must prophesy again before many peoples nations kindreds and kings that is the body of Christ in the work of the ministry that we are all called for as a body that is compacted together, fitly framed together, whichever joint supplies to the edifying of itself in love, coming together in one, one mind, one accord in the last day, not Pentecost, but tabernacles in the last season of God. God is glad gathering those now that he will use in the last day work of the ministry in the body of Christ. It's not just a preacher. It's not just a bishop. It is the body of Christ that's coming forth in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And the body of Christ will be the instruments of God's judgment, 
that he will use for the preaching of the everlasting gospel to all the world for a witness to all nations, then the end will come. God's doing it now. He said, this, this great supper of God. He said in Ezekiel 39, 18, you shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, and of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan, fresh fertile soil, Bashan, and you shall eat fat till you be full. In other words, an overabundance of dead to the fowls of the air, the beasts of the field, and drink blood until you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. And he goes on, and he said, I will set my glory among the heathen. When? All the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed and my hand that I've laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. There's your Isaiah 66. For as soon as uh, Israel, soon as she, the woman, natural Israel, travailed, and one day she brought forth her children. Is that the body of Christ? No. It's the nation of Israel. Those that escaped of foot, blood, those that escaped of the nations, will they show forth his glory? They will go into the millennial in uh, Matthew 25 as the righteous nations, not the church, righteous nations. On the right hand of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, he will gather all nations. The ones on the left, they will literally burn the ones on the right, the righteous nations, will enter into his kingdom. Not the kingdom of God Christ in you, but the millennial kingdom, the age, the age of the kingdom, the kingdom age, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. And the church will be literally kings and priests ruling over the nations with the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not the same. One is the church, the body of Christ, the ecclesia, the called out ones. Israel can still be grafted in right now if they turn from their unbelief, be born of the water and the spirit, and enter into the present truth. The ones that do not, they're not automatically saved. God's destroying all the ones in unbelief. But the ones that were affrighted, and gave glory to God. Those, when 7,000 fell, there was a remnant that were afraid and gave glory to God. And these were spared. They escaped of the nations. They the escaped of the nations, not the church, escaped of the nations. And they enter into that millennia, that reign of Jesus where he sets the nation Israel up. There's still death there. The child being 100 years old shall die. 100 years old. And those that prophesy, no need for prophecy because the Lord is there, Jehovah Shammah. And the prophet that prophesies shall be stoned by his parents because he speaketh lies. Why? Because the Lord is there. Each month you go up to see the Lord going one way and out another. You're always changed when you see the Lord. There's Jehovah Shammah. The Lord Jesus is there. There will be one king over the earth and his name one, Jesus. The same that you read in Zechariah 14. And all that's left in the land shall go up. And every upon the bells of the horses shall be holiness unto the Lord. For the Lord is there. Jesus is there, Jehovah Shammah. The revelation of Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he says, at that time, when we go to uh, Revelation 16, we take a look at that. And he says, in Revelation uh, 16, he says that there will be this wrath of God ultimately poured out. And remember, the everlasting gospel is being preached to all the world for a witness and all, all nations. 
but it's going to consummate. It's going to end. It's going to epoch here in Israel. Because the nations will come against Israel, against Jerusalem, to ultimately destroy her once and for all, thinking that they have arms on their part. They can do it. They, the nations are gathered together in one. The Christians are hated of all nations. Israel is hated. Jerusalem, they think once and for all, we're going to destroy the city of God. And whenever he comes, he said, uh, they're all the ones that were in a Trinity doctrine. Now, I know that's hard for some to believe that we have been duped and believed a lie for so many years, but it's the truth. The Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed of a three persons in a Godhead is a straight lie. So in Revelation 16, he's going to correct us. And before the great battle of Armageddon, he states something, a very profound revelation to those that have an ear to hear. Because those in the Trinity, can, Trinity a doctrine, the false doctrine of Christ, can come out to the true God if they have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And in Revelation 16, he talks about there in Revelation 16, 13. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. Three. There's your trinity. There are three spirits. Not three persons, one spirit. Or how do you think you can explain a trinity doctrine? Three spirits. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You got three personalities, three persons. It's always been an error. There's only one Holy One of Israel, God thy Savior, the Lord thy Redeemer. He is that servant. He is that man. Isaiah 43, 10 through 17. You got Philippians 2, 4 through 6. Over and over again, uh, Philippians uh, 2, uh, 6, 7, 8 tells you how the Lord did it. I am and of himself alone. There's only one God who will hear for the time to come. It's up on us now for the true revelation of Jesus Christ. And he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the ending, which is, was, and is to come. The Almighty. There's not another. He's not a part of God. He is God. All of it. And so there, before the Battle of Armageddon, he says in Revelation 16, 13, I, John said, I saw it. I understood what this meant. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There's the three. The dragon is a false father. The beast is a false son. They don't make an image of the father. Jesus Christ is the image, the express image of his singular person. But the beast makes an image to the beast. It's an image to a false son of God, that the son of God has come. And he is manifest in the earth. No, the father's manifest in the earth. And that's the difference, a major, a major profound difference that the son of God is the father revealed. God with us. So John sees it. This is a, this is a false father, a false son, and a false Holy Ghost. That is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet as three different spirits. And that, before Armageddon, John sees it and notices. How did it deceive the nations? Through these signs, miracles, and lying wonders. They had signs. They had miracles. They had lying wonders. It was the strongest delusion this world's ever seen. They followed the signs, not the signs following the believers. They, the, these so-called believers followed the signs. And they were signs, wonders, and lying. Lying wonders, miracles. Signs, miracles, and lying wonders. Second Thessalonians 2. Somebody said, how can that be? A God is love. God gave us 
the word of God, that's all that seek him, and a pure heart will find him. And if we back up on that, it's not God that has forsaken us, is we have forsaken God. We did not like to retain God in our knowledge. We have hewn out systems where there is no water. We have daubed the wall of salvation with untempered mortar, no fire of the Holy Ghost. Untempered mortar. It's, then that wall will fall. We think it's standing, but through this time, it will reveal who is right, who is righteous, and who is not wicked. It'll separate the righteous from the wicked, the holy from the profane, those that serve God versus those that do not serve God. It won't be a debate. It won't be where we have a debate and we have the scholar sitting there uh, going one there and scripture against scripture and what we think. No, this is God revealing who he is in judgment. There will be no way to miss this. It's a highway of holiness of which no fool shall err therein. You can't err in this. It'll be plainly declared through God's righteous judgments. And God said before that, he said, I, John, saw three unclean spirits. It dominated the earth. Mr. Babylon the Great, the mother of hearts and abominations of the earth. He wrote upon that scarlet colored beast. What is that beast? It's the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast. It is a false word of God. The mouth, the pay, the mouth. Out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. These are false, seducing spirits that have belied the Lord. And he said, it's out of the mouth of the dragon. Well, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Well, this is a dragon. Well, whoever's, who's ever to make war? Who is able to make war against a dragon? And out of the beast, who can do it? Arms stand on his heart, by his part. He, he forecasts his devices. They prosper. He spreads the, the prey among the people. He honors the God of forces. They think there's no way anyone can stand against this. And he took the kingdom by flatteries, by peace destroying many. Then God answers. And he answers by fire. Notice this, this trinity he literally exposes and destroys it. He tells you very simply, all that we thought was God, they are the spirits of devils, watch it, working miracles. Somebody said, I saw a miracle. Is it grounded in the truth? Is there one God? Does it lift up Jesus only as the father of glory? Is this confessed? Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is come as not has come, but is come in the flesh. A present, that present truth of the word of God, imperfect tense of the verb is come. Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the Father of glory, is still coming in the flesh until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Then all Israel, he's turning to national Israel right here in this battle of Armageddon and all Israel will know their savior and all of the tribes of the earth will mourn over him in his revelation. And he said, these it's that three spirits. You want that Trinity? You've got it. Friend of mine, I don't say that facetiously. We need to know the truth. It is a time to hear what the spirit Jesus the Lord Jesus is that spirit. He is that God. He is that father of glory. He has always been God and always will be God. There's not another. And because we don't give him the glory, this is the reason why the revelation has judgment, seals, trumpets, and vials. We're filled with the wrath of God. We bring it upon ourselves. The curse causeless will not come. Our own ways have procured these things unto us. And he's showing us here before Armageddon that these miracles that we saw saying, let us go after other gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The only word of God, the only religious book in the world that stands alone 
in truth, is the only book that foretells what is going to happen. God said, you are my witnesses because I have foretold you what I'm going to do. Before they come to pass, I tell you. It's prophecy that only God himself can do. And it's not just over a day or a month or a year. It's over the whole span of, of, the, of, of the creation. The heavens declare the handiwork of God. All of it, sun, moon, and stars, everything that God does is to reveal his name, his glory. But when we don't give him the glory, do unto his name, then we reap the reward, judgment. We bring it upon ourselves. So he tells us very plainly who these three spirits are out of the mouth of the dragon. It's a false word. It's a false speech. My sheep know my voice, singular, and a stranger they will not follow. But this is out of the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of false prophet. Three spirits. And these are the spirits. Revelation 16, 14. These are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world. To do what? To gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. What day is that? When they're coming against Israel, against Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, to destroy Israel and Jerusalem, the city of God. Jerusalem, a burdensome stone to all the nations. And then he says, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth the garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. That's why the seal, Christ, the revelation of Christ, the seal of the Holy Ghost is so essential. Without it, the person cannot, the believer cannot stand. Not little children, not young men, but fathers. Come to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, growing up in him in all truth, all things, that we'll be able to stand, be sealed. Well, somebody said, is that Armageddon? Yes, it is. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. What are these? Well, we see the lightnings, a great earthquake. It's such an earthquake as such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And we find that the judgments of God are there to be poured out. Now we go to Revelation. We see Revelation 17, 18, uh, there about uh, Babylon, the whore. Now we go to Revelation 19, the summation of all of it. And uh, he says here that uh, the Lord Jesus coming and all the servants of God in the armies of heaven, and as his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword, and with it, he should smite what? The nations. What nations? The nations that come against Israel. The nations that came against Jerusalem. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress of the fiercest and wrath of Almighty God. Who? Jesus Christ. He's God. And he has this revelation. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. That's the last revelation of Jesus that he gives and it's in all bold letters. Where you had Mr. Babylon the Great, the mother of hearts, abomination of the earth, all bold letters, all capital letters, that's been replaced. It deceived all the world. It's deceived all the nations. All the world was deceived. He deceived the whole world. But what does God do? He literally destroys it all and puts on his vesture and on his thigh king, a name written, king of all capital letters again. Why? Showing you who the true God is, not Mr. Babylon, not this false trinity doctrine, not these lies that's been spread and we've been duped for years and years, for two millennia. He shows us the truth. 
once and for all the truth, the true God and eternal life. King of kings, Lord of lords. And he said, I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls, remember those fowls of the air that fly in the midst of heaven. The same we read about in Ezekiel. The same that we saw about in Ezekiel 38 and 39. All those fowls and the beasts of the field that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Remember in Ezekiel, he said, you're going to drink blood until you're literally drunken with it. The beasts of the field, the fowls of heaven, the great supper and the sacrifice, the sacrifice of God. Here it is. It's the same. It's not a separate battle. It leads us right into Armageddon. That you may eat the flesh of kings. That means that all of them are gathered there. The flesh of captains. And the flesh of mighty men. And the flesh of horses. And of them that sit on them. And the flesh of all men. Both free and bond. Both small and great. Notice what happens here. I saw the beast of the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. What? This is that same battle we just saw. This is the same great supper. The fowls and the beasts of the field are going to eat and then they're drunken with blood, the flesh of man and the blood of the slain. And then he talks about the judgment. The beast was taken. And the false prophet that wrought miracles. And what did he do? He had deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. That is, Jesus Christ is not coming in the flesh. 1 John 4, verse 1 through 4. They confess that Jesus Christ is not coming in the flesh. He's not the Father of glory. He's not that spirit. He's the Son, but he's not the Father. He's part of that spirit, but he's not the Spirit of God. And them that worship the image. The beast and the false prophet were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain of the sword of him that sat upon the horse. What remnant? The remnant of his people that say no evil shall prevent nor overtake us. The ones that missed the mark that said, well, I was born of God. I was a little child, but I didn't think I had to go on to perfection. I thought that was all there was. If I'm born again, I'm born again. In Amos 9, 9, he talks about there's a sifting going on among the nations. Not the least grain will fall to the ground. Anyone that comes to Jesus will in no wise be cast out. But you have to grow up into him. It's not just a one little time thing, and I've got it. It is a progression. Going from faith to faith, from glory to glory, until we reach the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, God had provided some, uh, some better thing for us that they, that all that died in faith, never having received the promise, without us should not be made perfect. He's presenting to himself a perfect, spotless, blameless bride that has made herself ready. He said there, said they're going among the nations, not the least grain to fall to the ground but I'll destroy all the sinners of my people by the sword, which say, watch that, come out of the beast, of the, the, the say, the mouth, the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, the mouth of the false, false prophet. That say, remember when Jesus was going up to Jerusalem and Peter said, not so, Lord. No, you're going there for this Righteousness to be done, the cross. Not so, Lord, be it far from you. Jesus turned around to Peter, whom he had just given the keys to the kingdom, 
and said, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? For thou savest the things that be of man and not of God. We better take heed lest a promise slip any of us. Hebrews 4, that we should seem to come short of entering into his rest. There's some things hard to be uttered. Peter talking about the revelation given to Paul. And Peter said, this, there's some things that are hard to be understood. As the revelation given to Paul, hard to be understood. While some wrestle after these things, wrestle these scriptures, bringing upon themselves not just destruction, but swift destruction. So we're to give the earnest, more earnest heed to these things that are spoken. For there is that word, the proceeding word of God in the last days, which is the seal. The seal that God is doing now to those that have an ear to hear in the present truth of the flowing word of God, the throne room revelation, that we might be completely sealed in the truth. The work of the ministry, as he has spoken in the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave to him to show unto us, his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. He sent and signified it by his angel unto John. He said he's taken this sword, proceeded out of his mouth. What happened? And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Jesus destroyed them. He made a great supper for the fowls of heaven, for the great supper of God. Armageddon? Yes. That Ezekiel war? Yes. One and the same. Well, I thought there was a seven-year pre-tribulation rapture that we're in heaven, and then we come. No. No. We come down with the Lord of the army. When it says army of heaven, Daniel 4. Singular army. Armies of heaven, that is, uh, that double count, not only the Lord of hosts being the Lord and the angelic hosts with, but the body of Christ also, armies. A double count, Mahanaam, a double count. What will you see in the Shalomite? As it were, the company of two armies, the heavenly host, angelic force, and the body of Christ coming with the Lord on horses. And at that time, at the voice of the seventh angel, the mystery of God should be finished. Well, what is that? The last trumpet. That's not whoa, whoa, whoa trumpets. The seventh trumpet. That's not the last trump of God. Because there are other trumpets. There's final consummation of all things. After the tribulation, after seals, trumpets, and vows, after all has been done, after these things, he said, I'll show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye, shall the last trump. For the last trump of God shall sound, and we which are alive and remain. Last trump of God shall sound, and we shall be changed. What is that? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God. Here's the trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Coming right on down to what? The battle of Armageddon. And we will be instruments of judgment along with the Lord. And the wicked will be ashes under the righteous feet. Malachi 4. At days that shall burn as an oven. The day of the Lord. What's happening right now? A warning. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Prepare to meet him. Have oil for your lamp. There's your ceiling. There, there were five wise virgins. Five foolish. All of them were virgin. All of them were born again in the church. They were virgins. 
and spot it from the world. The only difference is five wise virgins had oil for their lamps, the oil of truth. The five foolish virgins had oil, but not enough. They had truth, but not enough. We have to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There is no pre-tribulation rapture. There's no seven years in heaven that you can say, oh, well, we're up here and we're eating and drinking with the Lord at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then after that, we come down. No. No. So we must obey the truth, be found in him, not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness of God by faith, for grace reigns through righteousness. Without that righteousness, which grace reigns through, there is no grace. What does that grace come? First Peter 1 says this grace comes at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The more he's revealed to you, the greater you grow in grace. And to the ultimate coming of the Lord with that with the second coming, without sin and salvation, for the salvation of his saints, his people. Well, if this has struck a chord in you, if you feel the witness of the Holy Ghost, we would like for you to contact us. We'd like to be one with you. As God is growing, is literally gathering together his body into one in the unity of the faith right now. So please write to me. Dennis Beard, Post Office, Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. Or drop me a message, or if you have questions, please send, and we'll do our best to answer them. And you can send us messages there at sealinggodspeople.com, sealinggodspeople.org, or dennisbeard.org. We love to hear from you. Remember, we need your prayer for support, and it's only through your generous financial giving we're able to keep this podcast coming to you. There, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. <laughs>